Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, the narcissist doesn't want you to know. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So the narcissist doesn't want you to know so many things about themselves, about their present, their past, their future, where they're going, where they were, who they were with, what they were doing, what they are thinking. When you're in a toxic narcissistic relationship, it is topsy-turvy. It is bizarre world. Everything that you think is left is right, and what is right is left, up is down, etc. You are on a roller coaster of emotions. You are being gaslit. You're being given the silent treatment. Your name is being smeared to other individuals throughout the body of the relationship. You just didn't know it, and you are experiencing the silent treatment the whole time behind the scenes in the house where no one can see this, you're experiencing rage fits. You are experiencing such toxicity to a level that you never thought was possible. How could another human being or individual portray themselves to be one person to the general public, which is the outside world, and be somebody completely different behind the four walls of the house or in a moving car or when they are privately alone with you many times? Not always, but many times. Now, the narcissist never wanted you to figure out so many things about them. And it is not until the relationship ends that many times you deduce that in fact you were with an individual who perhaps was a narcissist, a toxic individual who tried to take everything from you, all of your resources, all your resources, your time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, status, social circle, your health. They wanted to take everything they could. Now, I do mention that frequently on the channel, number one, because it's true. Number two, because many of you have been through narcissistic relationships and you know what I'm talking about. If that's the case, please drop comments below, pay it forward. But also, number three, is that many people are watching the channel or are trying to wrap their head around what a toxic narcissistic individual would be, and they haven't gone through a relationship like that yet to this point in their life or their time. And my hope is they don't. But these individuals, they need to understand that many people do not think the way you think. Many people don't have your best interest at heart. Many people are jealous or envious of you. Many people want to be you. And that certainly was the narcissist. The narcissist will come at you in all different sizes, sexes. Their, their appearances will be different. In other words, they could be from a different country, speak a different language. They could be tall. They could be chubby. They could be short. They could have the best body in the world. Who knows? But the point is, the narcissist is a shapeshifter. And until you get the message, perhaps including going through the toxic narcissistic abusive cycle, many times you can't wrap your head around what I'm talking about or what other individuals are talking about. Those of us who have gone through the narcissistic relationship and come through the fire and risen through the ashes like a phoenix and have put ourselves back together, we know what we're talking about. Our past and our relationship was the truth. It was what really happened to us or what really happened with us, with us in the relationship. Now many people, i.e. the flying monkeys or people who haven't been able to wrap their head around what narcissism is yet, they also will be questioning your sense of reality. They will be saying, well, wait, it couldn't be that bad, could it? It couldn't, there's no way, like, like what's the big deal? I see that person all the time and they behave so rational to me and they're a nice person and I don't understand it. That is, that is on purpose. Keep this in mind. The narcissist does not ever want to let the mask slip other than to those people that get very, very close to them. This could be in the workplace. This could be in a romantic setting. It could be in a family setting could be in a friendship, it could be in a community or organization you were a part of. But complete strangers many times don't see the mask slip. Now this isn't always, but usually complete strangers are looked at as potential viable sources of supply or even your replacement. They could be a candidate to take your spot in the narcissistic abusive cycle. The narcissist knows this. That's why they groom multiple individuals before you ever met them, while you were with them, and certainly post-relationship when it ended. Because the narcissist cannot be satiated with one relationship. It will never sustain them. They need new shiny objects. They need new conquests. They need new people to know who they are not. I hope you understand that. They don't want anyone to figure out who they are. And one of the main things the narcissist is afraid of or is very nervous or anxious about is being revealed or discovered or exposed. I'm suggesting for any of you on the channel watching the video, don't go expose the narcissist. It's not gonna benefit you. It really won't, it won't help you out at all. 
I suggest taking the high road, cutting your losses, healing, learning, growing, teaching, becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered, and understand that that relationship, you had to go through it. There was no other way. There was no other possibility because if you did not encounter that narcissist for that length of time, you certainly would have encountered another one as long as you're on this planet Earth. That's my take and I stand by it because each and every one of us on the planet have to learn lifelong lessons. And for those of us who have gone through the narcissistic abusive cycle, we know what we're talking about. That's something we had to go through. There was no other way. And the narcissist saw this when they met us early on. They saw us in a position of vulnerability, perhaps. They saw us wanting to fall in love. They saw us wanting to create a family. They saw us wanting to strike up a friendship or go into business with somebody or relocate halfway around the globe, who knows? But this is what the narcissist does. They prey upon unsuspecting individuals, people that don't know their value, people that don't know their worth. And at one point in time, that was me. And my guess is it was you also. So what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Lo and behold, the narcissist saw all the beautiful abundance within you. And they saw you in a very vulnerable position. Perhaps your spouse just died. Perhaps you relocated. Perhaps you just joined a new company. Perhaps you just moved into a new neighborhood or a new building. Or you just were brand new in a community or a hobby group that you were part of. And the narcissist wanted to see this. They're like, oh, who's this? This could be the new flavor of the month. Let me see what this person can provide for me. And they try to strike up a friendship with you or a relationship with you. One thing led to another. They told you a little bit of their fake history, which usually includes being a victim or their childhood wasn't the best or their parents weren't there for them or their last couple well, romantic relationships didn't pan out, but it wasn't their fault. It was always the alleged spouse or the alleged romantic party. Remember, the narcissist can't introspect. They can't take responsibility. They won't be accountable. What they do is they blame shift everybody. And when, they're, when you first meet the narcissist, pay attention to their words very carefully. If you, if you don't have the skill set yet to figure out if they are a narcissist, just listen to the words. Are they pointing fingers at everybody left, right, and center? Are they playing the victim card? Are they saying how difficult that they have it and how great you have it? Are they saying, hey, just loan me a couple dollars, just get me through today or tomorrow, or put a roof over my head, or feed me, or give me a ride to the airport, or things like that. Now, if these are one-off occurrences, I get it. That's probably a person down on their luck. But if these are happening over and over again, and then this person is glomming onto you. And what glomming on means, they're trying to get close to you and they're not letting you breathe. They're texting you or calling you or showing up at your house or emailing you. Basically, they're peppering you to break you down so you give in more and more and you believe this person needs so much help or time or affection or energy or money that you just wanna keep throwing all these things at that relationship, knowing it's not good for you, knowing it doesn't serve you, but how else are you gonna escape from this person? I'll tell you how you escape. You go no contact, you block them, you delete them, you remove all fly monkeys and people associated with them, if not now, when? Now, if you don't have that ability, I understand, maybe you're, the narcissist is a neighbor of yours and they live in the same building. Maybe they live under the same roof as you, who knows? Maybe they are a boss, the toxic narcissistic workplace bully. Any of these things or more can make your life very uncomfortable and challenging to say the least. The narcissist knows this. They also know that they don't want you to figure out how to escape from the narcissistic fog or how to escape from the relationship. Now, what I do is I provide tools and wisdom and full firsthand experience on how to do just that. If you pay attention to the videos I've shared over the years, you'll understand that there is a lot, a lot of knowledge in these videos. These come from the heart, they come from experience, they come from insight, and they come from figuring out what does and doesn't work when you're trying to break the narcissistic relationship and or break the trauma bond, which is for a whole different video series. The narcissist knew what they were doing to you the whole time. You need to identify that and understand it. So if you're feeling sorry for the narcissist, wow, I really, I should help them out because I have the ability to do so. I can really change their life. I can help them out. And perhaps you have been helping them out for a few months or years. Think about it. What are you doing there? Are you enabling them? Are you providing a lifestyle for them? Do you actually want to break free from them? Or is it just easier for you to give them money every month or week or day, whatever it is, or help them out? This is not going to improve. It will only deteriorate your finances over time. Keep this in mind, the narcissist loves money. And what do they love more than money? They love your money more than money. And they will come at you any way, shape, or form, like I mentioned previously in the video, to ask you for money or for a house or for support in any capacity. And this is exactly how the narcissist shape shifts throughout life. 
That's why you must get the wisdom. You must apply the tools. You must understand that you are the priority. You come first, second, and third. But again, for this video, you must understand the narcissist never wanted you to figure out so many things about them. One of them would be that they were having uh, probably other sources of supply behind your back, meaning let's say it was a romantic relationship. Well, you thought you were exclusive. Maybe even you got married. The wedding ring on the finger doesn't mean anything to the narcissist. All it means is a license to abuse and a way to put a front to the outside world that they are stable, that they, that they can get married. There's no love in the narcissist. There's no empathy. There's no kindness. What there is is abuse, manipulation, deceit, and destruction. And this is how the narcissist goes from relationship to relationship, city to city, town to town, business to business, country to country. And they don't care about their wake of destruction they leave in the past. All they care about is acquiring more and more broken hearts, more broken relationships, more people stuck in the trauma bond, more people that can't escape the narcissistic fog, more people that are decimated by all of the resources, like I share so many times on the channel. This is what the narcissist wants to do. And you may say, well, that's kind of rough. I mean, does everybody like that? Well, no, everyone isn't like that. I'm referring to a certain kind of narcissist. And I'm also referring that other kinds of narcissists may not be as, let's say, taxing or trying or challenging. Narcissism is on a spectrum. Not, it's not one size fits all. There are multiple different shades of narcissism. And all of us have a little bit of us, a little bit, bit of that in us. The only question is every morning when we wake up, do we do the right thing and try to better the planet? Or do we not do the right thing and try and take from the planet or unsuspecting individuals? Which is another thing the narcissist doesn't want you to know. They don't want you to know that this is how they live, this is how they exist, and that they never cared about you, despite the fact maybe you got married or not. They don't care about anybody on the planet but themselves. But again, they didn't want you to know. Another thing the narcissist didn't want you to know is they are incapable of love. They are not. They're shallow, they're hollow, they're empty vessels. Another thing the narcissist didn't want you to know is where they would be going when they would be away on an alleged weekend or for a period of time. Notice how when you were in the relationship with this individual who turned out to be the narcissist, there would be periods of time where they would disappear. Maybe it was during the day for a few hours. Maybe it was after their work shift for a few hours. Maybe it was for weekends on alleged trips on getaways. Maybe it was in the middle of the day or the night, who knows, but the narcissist is always on the prowl looking for supply. That is why their smartphone is literally their best friend. It's not the bestie that they grew up with. It's not their child. It's not their mom. It's not their romantic interest. It's the smartphone. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the smartphone doesn't talk back. The smartphone doesn't have emotions. The smartphone is available 24 seven and the smartphone can be turned on and turned off. You can't do that with a human being unless you're a narcissist and you try to have somebody, maybe your partner become silenced, then they're very good at that. But the smartphone is something the narcissist cannot do without. Many toxic individuals have multiple smartphones. I will not say everyone that has multiple smartphones is a narcissist, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying to you is the smartphone provides so much information and so many ways for the narcissist to find your replacement. Think about what a dating app is. Dating apps are a cesspool for narcissism right there, or toxic individuals, or people looking to take your money, or your time, or your energy, or people to play the victim and have you provide lifestyles for them, whether they live right next to you or halfway around the world. Also, things on the smartphone, other basic apps that you are on, social media platforms, think about how many fake accounts have been spying on you that were perhaps from the narcissist, or from flying monkeys, or from a nar narcissist you don't even know, or from complete strangers. Think about how many different times people peek on your social media and the narcissist is no different. That's how they get supply. Think about what I'm sharing here. Let's say the relationship ended and you are now healed or you have healed and you're well on your way to the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference where you don't care about the narcissist one bit. They're in the past and so are all the people from that period of time. God bless you all, just stay away from me. You say those exact words. Well, you're on social media and what could happen there is Anybody can be looking at your social media. It could be a narcissist you've never met. They could be eyeballing you, taking a look to see who you are, what you're doing. But going back to the narcissist, the one, the, the one you're thinking about right now, they are testing the waters with you. They're seeing if you've healed. They're seeing if you have entered a new uh, romantic relationship. They're seeing if you've put yourself back together. They're seeing if you've relocated. They're seeing how you look, how you talk, how you act. They're testing the pulse of you. And are they gonna hoover you? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the smartphone is a weapon of destruction used by the narcissist to keep track of individuals that they did know, don't know, or want to know. Please play that again. 
Now, before I close the video, I wanna let you know, there are so many things the narcissist didn't want you to know. They didn't want you to know so many things. That's why in the very beginning of the relationship, they wore a mask to manipulate you. In other words, they had you fall in love with them when they knew they couldn't fall in love with you. They sank you into the deep end of the pool, i.e. the trauma bond or the narcissistic fog, because that's where they trapped you and they kept you. They kept you wanting to get back to that beginning stage, the euphoric stage of the relationship, the relationship's inception, if you will. And you never quite got back there, did you? No, you didn't, and I'll tell you why you didn't because that was all fakeness by the narcissist. And the narcissist knew this. They also knew that they could throw little breadcrumbs of hope, breadcrumbs of fake love, breadcrumbs of fake empathy, breadcrumbs of fake intimacy at you at any period of time. And that would string you along, uh, string you around longer, maybe for another day, week, month, year, decade, who knows? But that's how they play that. And while they're doing that with you, I can assure you, they are doing multiple things behind your back that you don't even know about and you can figure what, out what those things may or may not be, but the narcissist gets supply from anything from a pet, to a haircut, to clothes, to Amazon, to traveling, to romantic relationships, to texting, to their own immediate family members, to anything they want. That's how the narcissist regulates themselves. They don't breathe air the way you and I do and just we can just be. They breathe air, and the air they breathe, when they exhale, it needs to exhale disruption, toxicity, heaviness, full of weight. That's exactly how the narcissist regulates themselves. That's why when you were in this relationship, or perhaps you still are, everything was going swimmingly for you. It was going great. And then you, let's say you were having a good couple of days and you're like, wow, this is going really well. Where's this been? I've been missing this peace and the serenity and the calmness of the relationship. And this is really great. As soon as you would put your guard down, boom, there's a rage fit, temper tantrum, blame shifting, victim, anything they would do to disrupt the energy. Why? Because it was too peaceful and they didn't want you to know that, but that's what they did. That's why the narcissist blows up vacations frequently, your birthday, holidays, any regular day of the week, anything they can disrupt, that's what they do because that's what they need to do. They need to have the spotlight on them, the attention on them. They can't have it being on another individual and they certainly can't have it being on you. This is the way of the narcissist. It is not the way you deserve to be treated, not for one minute longer than you need to. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful and late Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. I hope you all have a great evening. God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, and I hope you like the setting. That's a little more quiet. Love you guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.